Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here with a very serious issue. This is a national emergency. It's almost worldwide when you look at some of the other countries. But what I want to share with you is something that is totally horrific. You're looking at girls that have gone missing. Now, some say it's 14 girls in 24 hours. I beg to differ. I believe it's 20 to 50. It's just that we won't hear about it because these are not people of renown. These are black girls. They don't have the money. They don't have the clout. So they're not going to go into the mainstream of news headlines because they're not considered that important. We all know that there's no need in trying to sweep it under the rug or justify it. Now listen, there's a craze going on lately, a lot of kidnappings. And this is how it's happening. This is why it's happening. A lot of, uh, now this is my take on it, okay, because you know I'm not going to mince my words. I, I really honestly believe that the money strings, the purse strings as they call it, that run this country and that run this world, a lot of these people in government heads, organizations, states, whatever, even some of the law enforcement themselves, FBI, CIA, whatever, there are individuals, not the whole organization, but there are sleazy individuals in these organizations that are underhandedly making big bucks off of children's deaths and off of sex trafficking. Listen, in, in these last years, especially this year, it just seems to be blown out of proportion, there is a new craze. The kidnappings that are going on are for the sake of sex trafficking, which has been going on for a long time, and organ harvesting, which a lot of us don't know, has also been going on for a long time. We're just hearing about it now. Yeah. Anytime the public uh, rears their head and raises all kind of cane, stuff starts coming out the woodwork. A whole lot of skeletons start rattling at that point. So listen, I am asking you, to pray. This is a serious situation. And those of you who have children, brothers, sisters, kids, you're teaching whatever, teach these kids what to look out for. Teach them what to look out for. Now, one of my friends called me and told me, I don't know if you've heard about this, about the boy who was found. I think his name is Kendrick Johnson. He was found in a gym wrapped <laughs> wow wrapped in a bag l stuffed his body his dead body was stuffed with newspapers all his organs gone now you look at a lot of these kids and the police get on TV and they talk about runaways and all of this. But let me tell you something. It's not about runaways. It's about not being informed. It's about not being prepared. And it's about not having the backup of our government to protect us. Because there are too many individuals up in there underhandedly making money off of our children's dead bodies and organs. Can you imagine how the abortion industry has made bank? Okay, so you've got these black young ladies, these Latino young ladies, a disproportionate number. When you look at the proportion of racial balance in, in the country, this is disproportionate. And we think, you know, a lot of people are concentrating on the 14 or 15 that went missing in the last 24 hours. No, I believe it's way more. We just won't 
hear about it. Trust me. And it will be watered down. Oh, well, crime is going down. Oh, well, things are getting better. I don't care what's getting better. I don't care what the number is. The number's too big, whatever it is. And there's too little being done. Too little attention being placed on it. Now, there may be some police departments that really care and have departments that deal with that. But why are not they being funded by the government to really dig into it? One guy on YouTube was talking about how this young white girl was missing. And they had uh, alligators. They pulled out all the bells and whistles. I mean, you heard about it across the globe. And all these different teams and, and rescue efforts were being done to find this girl. And you get 14, 15, 60, 100 black and Latino girls missing. But where are the dogs? Where are the alligators with the hidden cameras? Where are the rescue efforts? Where are the bells? Where are the whistles? I don't see them, do you? So then you turn around and you look back. Look at, at 2014. 2014. Oh, I've been, I've been looking all over this internet. In the year 2014, reportedly, imagine how many were not reported. 64,000 black women. Not women. Black women alone, 64,000 of them mm -hmm. in the United States came up missing. Something smell fishy to you? While everybody is taking selfies, smile for the camera, people are out there being tortured, being uh, driven into sex slavery. There, there's sex trafficking. There, I mean, Arabians for birthday presents. They buy their kids black slaves. Where do you think they get the black slaves from? Hello. Now, a lot of a lot of the media wants to portray black people as coming from such broken homes that all we want to do is run away, run away, run away. Ergo, no investigation takes place. Let me straighten that record out, baby. This woman put it so perfectly. She says that the human trafficking usually is not a random snatching off the street, usually. Some are. But what happens is, you know how they call in the church friendship evangelism? Yeah, I call this friendship kidnapping. Because what you end up with are people who will do anything. They will sell their own mama down the river for a few bucks. And they will hook up. A bunch of guys hook up with a couple of girls going to a party together. Now I'm going to put this in, a, in, in Pat's terms so you can see the picture. Okay, there's a party going on. Ooh, goody. High school students or junior high, whatever. And they're going to go to this little party and the parents are going to be there. And it's really nice and it's safe. And oh, yeah. And you have one or two little loose cannons in the group that like to be a little more adventurous than they should. And they egg their other girlfriends into going with them somewhere else after the party. Or to meet a bunch of guys at a at an, uh, a restaurant right before they go home so they can flirt. Now they think they're going to flirt with the guys. They have no idea what's hidden behind the guys. The agenda that's hidden behind them. 
and the guys are just smoothing them and making them feel all cute and adorable and oh boy it just tickled pink while the guys are lining the girls up they've got some vans hitting around the corner with some uh uh underground uh organizations that are there to pay the guys and take the girls and the guys don't know where they're taking them the guys don't know who they are but they get paid and these girls get shipped off into other countries some of them are right here in america and they're kept captive held captive by somebody who can pay the bill and they can screw them they can beat them they can do whatever they want to them they can sell them into prostitution and they only get out when they have to serve their purpose and then they get locked back up i mean you have to think that's how little boys get sold friendship kidnapping they get sold because these little boys you know they're lonely they're vulnerable these pedophile i mean this thing just goes crazy it's a it's an epidemic in this country how we are literally sacrificing the young people it's worse than genocide and they think it's okay because they paid for it i don't get this i don't get how this country can allow this to go on so long unless unless country a lot of you are government heads in political positions, mayors, workers of the mayors, uh, 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 what do they call the um, cabinets, Congress, whoever you are, stop this. You're destroying lives. You're not that hard up for money. If the mass, the, the, the big... Uh, a uh, group of us in this country can live on less than $30,000 a year. You can definitely afford to live on less than $300,000 a year. You don't have to make your millions in blood money. And you really think God has turned a blind eye? Oh, he hasn't moved yet, baby, but he's getting ready to move. And I, pe I petition every Christian that's listening to this to ask God to send his warring angels in and do a strategic attack on the most guilty, the most powerful parties that have been perpetuating this thing down through the years, decades, and stop them dead in their tracks, expose them, and free up these kids, deliver them from this mess in the name of Jesus. Okay, now, uh, this is another warning. I want to warn the young people. And then I'm going to tell you a story about a boyfriend I had. Okay, um, this is a warning. When you are in the parking lot, or you're coming from school, or you're walking to get to the bus stop, don't walk so close to these vans parked on the curb with painted windows with no windows, if you see a van, stay away from it, even if it has a bunch of windows, stay away from it. You and your girlfriend stay in the store, call somebody, say, hey, there's a suspicious van, can you come get us? Call the cops and say, uh, there's a suspicious van and we have to walk by it to get to our house. Could you please come and check it out? Because we don't want to leave unless we know we're okay. Let the cops come and check it out. Mm. You hear what I'm saying? Listen. Okay, now this is a story I want to share with you that happened when I was four years old three years old i was three years old that's how long ago this uh organ harvesting has been going on when i was 20 
I was 18. I dated a boy who was 23. His name was Al. Was Al. You know he's not alive now, don't you? When he was seven, eight or seven, I was two or three. Now, he had to have an appendectomy at that age. And he went in for surgery. He had the appendix taken out. Organ harvesting, that's what we're talking about back then in the 50s. <clears throat> and here we are with this black boy in a hospital with white staff back then. And what happens? Everything goes fine. The parents are there. He comes out a-okay. They send him home and he lives. Fast forward. Fast forward to his late 30s. 30s, I say. He didn't do drugs. He didn't drink. He wasn't a smoker. He was a nice guy. 30s. He finds out from his kidney specialist he has to go on dialysis. Hmm, you say. Yes. Well, listen to this. He went on dialysis. When he went on dialysis, his kidney specialist asked him, When did you have your kidney removed? Kidney? No. I had an appendectomy. No, you had a kidney removed. I could see it on the x-ray. It was surgically removed. Now, I don't know what the family did about it, but that would have been a major lawsuit in my book. And there should never be a statute of limitations to crimes like that. Now, listen. He found out that he only had one kidney. But his parents didn't sign up for anything but a removal of an appendix. So they went through that same hole, baby, and reached in and helped themselves to a kidney. As a result, his other kidney failed. He lived on dialysis just a couple of years and died either before or right around his 40th birthday. Mm -hmm. His life was cut from him, literally cut from him. Years were cut from his life because some white doctor, white surgeon was getting paid under the table to steal somebody's organ to save probably some white person's life. The little black boy didn't matter. You know, back then we didn't matter at all. And it was really obvious too. Yeah. This is what I say to you parents. If your child needs to have surgery, even now, you make sure you demand that the doctor takes a full body x-ray before the surgery takes place. Make sure you know every organ that's in that baby's body. Then after you have the surgery, you make sure that child goes back through the same thing and gets a full body x-ray once again. Make sure nothing goes that wasn't signed off on. That's my warning. See, that stuff has been happening. And we haven't heard about it. Because nobody, you know, blacks didn't have a voice back then. We're now starting to have a voice. But even now they're trying to, shh, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, right. So they want to say that crime is going down, that, that kidnappings are going down, that missing children, the numbers are going down. Wait a minute, baby, they're too far up to even call it going down. If you have thousands and thousands of a disproportionate amount of black and Latino girls disappearing. Saying that it's more like uh, instead of 50,000, maybe it's 45,000. Do you really think that matters? That 
shouldn't even come up in the equation. That shouldn't even be mentioned. Because what you're doing is belittling the impact. You're belittling the, the, the damage that's being done. The crime. You're, you're, you're smoothing over the atrocity. And making doo-doo look like a bowl of pudding. Okay. I can talk on and on and on. But I ask you, please, be careful. Watch yourselves, young ladies. And here's another thing. I want to share this with you. I told this story recently, but it fits in this video. When I was eight years old, I went to the store for my mom. Long story, real short. A guy was leaning up against the wall. I noticed him going in, but I noticed him coming out. And when I look, I always check my surroundings. I don't know why that instinct was in me. My parents taught me well. But I was always aware of my surroundings. And I was very much aware quickly that he was no longer leaning up against the wall. Even though he was in my rear. I was looking at the mirror reflections of the cars. The bumper reflections when they had metal on the bumpers. And the beveled window, the store windows as I was going down the street. I saw him about 50 or 80 paces behind me. And just to make sure, I did a little detour to make sure, see if he was following. And then right, I used traffic as my cover. You know, in New York, traffic can be crazy. And as the cars would come, I knew I was good at, at darting between cars. And as cars were coming back and forth, I had my key in my hand. I was watching as the cars were racing back and forth it was during rush hour. I took off like a bat out of you know where, up the, across the street, up the stairs, and unlocked the door and locked the door and had to go through the second door and lock it. By the time I hollered, Mama, Mama, there's a guy following me. He was at the first door trying to kick it down. Now, what would he want with a little eight-year-old black girl? I was safe. I was locked in. My mother had a knife. She let him know that would be the last day he drew breath if he, if he got through that door. And then she went and called the police. Now, my point in saying this is, you young ladies, be aware of everything. Don't walk alone. Hang with your friends. When you hang with your friends, if any of them wants to go off with somebody, you talk them out of it or let them, but don't you go with them. Don't you get caught somewhere where you can't, where there aren't a lot of people that can come and rescue you. Keep whistles on you, around your neck, whatever you have to do. Take advantage of law enforcement. You're walking somewhere, too many guys hanging out, too many vans along the street that you never saw before that look fishy, you get a funny feeling in your gut, I don't care if that's all you get, you get on that phone and you tell them, I think somebody's following me, I think somebody is laying wait for me around the corner, I'm afraid, could you please come and take me home? Do whatever you got to do. Inconvenience whoever you have to inconvenience. But do not isolate yourself when you get scared. Run into a big restaurant if there's one on hand. Into a big store. Tell the, store, the cash register. Call the police. There's somebody after me. That person isn't going to come in the store and try to grab you. You know, people do their dirt in the dark. Just like roaches. Okay, I'm done. Beware. Please, beware.